How many times have you run stat only to find the output file full of errors? In this video, I'll walk you step by step into creating an error-free file in the first go. This is the beginner's guide to STAT Pro. Hi, I'm Kushal and if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing below. I share free content on various topics for you to follow your passion right from the luxury of your homes. All you would need is a laptop and some eagerness to learn. This, however, is a series on Stat Pro. I'm planning to do an entire series. So if you haven't followed it along till now, I'm linking the entire playlist in the description below. So without further ado, let's begin. Before giving you the beginner's guide, I would urge you to watch one of my previous videos on what you need to know before learning STAD. Watching that video will make your life much simpler. So if you haven't watched it, just go watch it and come right back. If you have, well, let's dive into it. So I've broken down this beginner's guide into three parts just for you to digest it better. The three parts are as follows. The first is the pre-modeling stage. The second is the modeling stage. And the third is the post modeling stage. So let's dive into the first part of this mini series, which is the pre modeling stage. This is a stage which comes right before the actual creation of the structure, the creation of loads, the creation of geometry. Although this may seem like a mundane topic to you, students actually struggle a lot in this area. There are some minor tips here and there, which make or break a structure. So don't be like those students. Just follow this simple 10, 15 minutes video so that your life can be much simpler later on. So the step one in this pre-modeling stage is giving your structure a name and a location. Now I have already made a video on this. Uh, I'll share that link in the description again. You can go ahead and watch it. So I'm not explaining it. Go ahead and open the Strat Pro software on your computer. You can go and create a new project once you click on the new project, you'll see this window up here. You can go and name it. I'll name it Cantilever. I'll copy the name and paste it here. So the second step of this window is going to be creating the type of structure you want. So there are four types of structures supported in SAT Pro. And these four cases are mostly good enough for all the possible cases out there. So let's discuss them one by one very quickly. The first is going to be the space. As the name sounds, space is used to create a structure with any configuration of geometry and loading. For all these four cases, I'll be talking in terms of four key points. The first would be the geometry. The second would be the loading. The third would be the deformations and the fourth would be the joints. Okay. In case of space, the geometry is three dimensional. The loading can be three dimensional. The deformations again are three dimensional and the joints can be of any type. Those can be fixed joints or pin joints or whatever the case may be. Let's uh, move ahead to plane. Plane as the name sounds again is a two dimensional structure. Uh, this is along the plane X, Y. So we'll talk about those four key points again. The first, the geometry. As you can understand, possibly uh, the plane, a plane structure would be just a two dimensional structure in the plane X, Y. The loading again is along the same plane X, Y. The deformations again are along the plane X, Y and the joints can be of any kind. Next is floor. Floor is again a two dimensional structure. However, it differs from plane in two key aspects. The geometry of plane was in the plane X, Y. However, when it comes to floor, it is along the plane X, Z, as you can see. The second key aspect in case of plane, the loads were acting in the same plane X, Y. However, in the case of floor, the loads are perpendicular to the plane that is perpendicular to X, Z. The same goes with deformations. The deformations are perpendicular to the plane X, Z. And finally, joints can be of any kind. Now, the fourth is a truss. Truss is a special structure which is made up of members which are only able to take actual loads. Now this is achieved by creating pin joints. None of the members are actually designed 
for taking up bending or shear. So all the members are taking axial loads only. Going for the four key points again, uh, geometry can be three-dimensional. That is uh, any configuration of geometry is possible. Loading is again three-dimensional. Deformation is again three-dimensional. So this is similar to the space except the key feature that all the joints in case of a truss are pin joints. Next is choosing the correct units or rather choosing the convenient units. I love using SI units uh, just because it makes my life much simpler. I'm baffled as to why Americans still use the uh, FPS uh, system. So in all my cases, I'll be using uh, the length units as meter and the force unit as kilonewton. Now my settings are set to defaulting at meter and kilonewton. If you haven't, uh, this is probably because during the installation part, you chose imperial units rather than choosing the metrics system. Do not worry. I'll quickly show you what we can do. So I'll just cancel it for a second. You can move to this part here where, where it says configuration. Just click on it and go to the base unit. In the base unit, just select the base unit to whichever you like. In our case, we'll be selecting metric. Next time you open, you'll be finding your length units as meter and kilometer. We'll be coming back to this configuration in a later video. For now, this is the only setting which we need to disturb. So I'll just quickly name it again, just because I canceled it there. I'll copy it and I'll create a folder with the same name on the desktop. Now I'll create next. It says the specified part does not exist. Uh, do you want to create it? Yes, we do. Uh, you can leave this window uh, to its default settings. Just to quickly tell you what it is, this is the way you'll start creating or this is the way in which you'll model your structure. So you can start by creating or adding a beam. You can directly jump into adding a plate, adding solid opening structure uh, wizard. You can uh, jump into this tad editor file and you can of course uh, jump into the job information editor. We will investigate all these uh, various topics in a lot more detail in our upcoming videos. For now, you can just leave the setting. Everything is changeable later. So since we are creating a cantilever beam, uh, that would not be a space structure because we'll be creating it along a plane. So I'll just change it to plane. I'll click next, go and click finish. Wait for the system to load. So if you're new to STAD, this entire interface may look very daunting. But let me assure you, this is actually very intuitively built. And yes, there are scope of improvements here and there, but once you get a hang of it, STAD is actually quite intuitive. So let me break this entire window down for you. So this entire window is made up of five parts. The first is the menu bar. In the menu bar, you'll find the various options you'll be using during the entire structure creation and anal analysis design and so on. If you have anything to do with the file, you can just jump into the file part. You can go for new, open, close, save and so on. If you have got anything to do with the geometry part or the creation of any node, beams, etc., you can just jump into geometry. So you can create a beam, you can create a plate and so on. You can in fact rotate mirror and stuff like that. If you just go for selection, you can go for select and you get the point. The second part is this toolbar. Now this holds all the most frequently used functions of STAD as per the STAD uh, developer team. So instead of going every time to edit and input command file, you can actually jump right to the STAD editor from here. Same goes for other uh, frequently used functions. During the early videos, I'll take you through the menu items and later as we develop our skills, we can use the toolbar. The third part is the page control. Page control is a very important part of STAD. This is where all the actual creation and designing and analysis part takes place. So just remember the flow. So you move from top to bottom and there are two menus here. One is the outer menu and one is the inner menu. 
so every outer menu has some items related to it in the inner menu so for example in the setup you can see its shop for geometry you can see its beam its plate its surface and so on for general you get the point so the trick here is to move from top to bottom and from top to bottom for the outer and the inner so for example if you're moving to setup we'll go to setup then go to jobs the second step would be to go to geometry go to beam plate and so on down the next would be to go to general go to property specification r support and so on okay the next part of this interface this daunting interface is the actual main window where you'll see how your structure looks so this is where your structure would appear and finally the fifth part is the data area so this uh, right here is the data area where you'll actually be entering the data of your model so uh, this is the end of part one of this mini series on a beginner's guide to start i hope you were following along with me and if you were you'll probably have a brief sense of what is going on getting used to start is easy once you once you follow the right steps i'll keep trying to make your experience better and much more smoother again if you're not subscribed please subscribe to this channel uh, it is your support that uh, drives me into making this content also once you hit the subscribe button there is a notification bell that pops up please click that so that you don't miss any future videos for now bye bye and i'll see you on the next one